Okay, today I've been working on trying to improve the accuracy of my myotome testing routine, particularly with regards to the upper levels L1, 2 and 3. I'm going to show a video on screen of how I was originally taught to assess these levels and then I'm going to explain what I think the problems with these are and I'm going to show a couple of other techniques and then explain why I think they are more accurate. So, to begin with, this is how I was shown to do hip flexion and hip adduction. The hip flexion technique is designed to assess the strength of the muscles innervated from the L1 and 2 levels. So I was shown to take the knee up, ask the patient to move it towards them and resist. The second technique, hip adduction, is to test the levels 2 and 3. You can see I've got my hand there just supporting the foot and then I've asked the patient to cross their foot across the midline. Now my problem with these techniques is that they're not very specific so with the knee flex or sorry with the hip flexed at 90 degrees we've got maximum input in hip flexion from the rec fem muscle and the rec fem muscle is actually predominantly um, innervated by the lower fibers of two three four so four and three are more dominant than two so as, which is the other hip flexor, is more dominated by fibres from the L1-2 levels. So we should surely be doing everything that we can to make the psoas the dominant muscle in the movement as opposed to rec fem. So doing this with the hip flexed is counterintuitive. With the second movement, which was adduction as I demonstrated it, the hips are at a kind of 45-50 degree angle and the foot is resting on the couch. Now this means that when you are adducting the leg, you're getting quite a lot of contribution from adductor magnus, which receives most of its innovation again from the L4 level. What ideally we want to do is try and take the hip up to 90 degrees, thus taking the adductor magnus out of the situation and biasing using the adductor longus and adductor brevis muscles, which receive most of their innovation from the L2-3 roots. So I'm going to show you the techniques that I'm going to be using going forwards because I think these are slightly more accurate. So the first one is really easy, almost too easy. The leg is flat, you put your hand on the thigh and you ask them to lift the knee. That's it. In this position we get maximum engagement of the psoas and we minimise the um, engagement of the rec fem. Secondly, for adduction, I've taken the foot and I've lifted it off the couch and then I'm pulling the hip all the way up to 90 degrees. This puts the adductor magnus in a really disadvantageous position and prioritises the brevis and longus. This also, with the hip at 90 degrees, is a better direction for the fibres of brevis and longus because they kind of run in that direction, so it's optimal for them to be more active and adductor magnus is just kind of a passenger in this move. So this is how I'm going to be doing it from now on. I hope you think it's interesting, maybe you think it's useful. Um, I definitely don't think this is less accurate than the previous technique, um, and I think if you can explain why you're doing what you're doing, that's probably a good thing. And using these techniques, I can explain why I think I'm biasing what I'm biasing. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment if you think this is good or if you think it's bad.